This is Coogan Cassius for iFilm London. We are at the Emirates Arena here in Glasgow. With me, I've got boxing promoter, entrepreneur, and um, whatever else he is. Eddie Hearn, how are you, Eddie? You're like a lovesick puppy when you explain all that. You're boxing promoter and entrepreneur. You've missed me, haven't you, Coogie Bear? It's been a long time. Swaying around who? in Las Vegas. Let's just have it straight. Who's missed who more? I've been in Las Vegas. You've been here. So, you've had a press conference in the week for David Hay. I've been a Mayweather extravaganza. Who's missed who more, do you reckon? I don't know. I'd like to feel it was mutual. You know, it was like doing an interview with James Helder. Nothing against James. Lovely fella. But it was like, it was like when you put a T-shirt on back to front. Do you know what I mean? The necks up here it just didn't quite feel right. It was like you could get away with it, but it just it didn't feel right, you know? Do you think you and James Helder are capable of doing an interview without my name being mentioned? Oh, well, you're so big time, Coog, aren't you? I mean, you know. But it's difficult with James because he's, you know, he's got banter, but, you know. We'll leave, it. We'll leave that one now. This is the first event, the first sporting event and boxing event that's to be held at this Emirates Arena. Just first time I've been here, and it's, uh, it's quite impressive. It's quite big, um, so when it's full up, It'll be quite some atmosphere here. Yeah, you don't know a few extra thousand that want to come, do you? Well, how many have you sold? <laughs> no, what, have you been telling lies? Haven't you really oh, sold I'm enough tickets? We've only done 12, though. We've done about 5,500. We'll have about, I would have over six in, which is fantastic. But, you know, we, you can get up to 10 here if you want. We're not fully set up for that, but it's going to be rocking in here on Saturday night and beautiful arena, as you've seen. Um, took Sky to the SECC which we do the darts at it's a fantastic arena as well and then came here and just you know it's it's a winner obviously Ricky Burns is your fighter but the only other real matchroom fighter that's fighting on the bill is Rocky Fielding how comes you didn't put any other like up and coming prospects on this bill like maybe Cardle or some of the other ones to get them maybe just to fight a little fours and six rounders well, they're fighting non-stop, and actually the way that the schedule worked out, you've got Callum Smith's going to be boxing on a frotch card in his first eight-rounder. Stalker um, was in Argentina, so he couldn't train. He was at the Martin Murray fight. Martin Ward is fighting on the frotch bill. Um, Callum Smith, oh, Duncan Smith, Yafai is out with an injury, and Cardle's cut. So, in answer to your question, that really says it all. But to be honest with you, for our first big event in Scotland, I wanted it to really feature the cream of the Scottish fighters because I didn't want to just turn up with a load of English fighters. And you know, I want there to be a great atmosphere here for Scottish boxing. And I think a lot of these young fighters, like the likes of Brophy and Slowey and you know, even John Simpson, who's got a lot to give, have got the opportunity, and Simmons, to grow with Ricky Burns and what we try and do in Scotland. So, you know, obviously we've got Rocky on, but I didn't just want to flood it with our fighters but if they needed to get out and if they were able I probably would have stuck another one or two on but um, we've got so many shows at the moment so many opportunities for our fighters what are you going to do what are you going to do bit, I feel like a bit of a politician sometimes you know what I mean politician stroke car salesman yeah fast car ready fast car ready um, car salesman it, yeah this fits your description because you do talk like car salesman um, right Lots of things to briefly go through. I don't want another 35 minute episode, even though that was a winner. Um, George Groves, sparring with Kessler. That bit weird. I don't know why it strikes me as saying weird. Is it weird? Not really. I mean, it's weird if you think too much into it. Like, the bottom line is, is Kessler sparring for Groves would improve him as a fighter. And I think that's what Adam Booth cares about, really. It's not about... Oh, do you think there'll be a couple of people that think that's weird and not the right thing to do? You know, Groves and Frotch aren't friends. Do they like each other? Probably not. Do you know what I mean? So, I can understand people going, oh, that's a bit weird. But really, if you're Groves, you're probably thinking, well, wow, that's great experience for me, great preparation for my fight. He's not going to be sparring Frotch. So, you know. Can understand would, Ke would Kessler not think to himself... Perhaps that if he's sparring, that he'll come back because you're part of the same stable and tell tales. 
Yeah, I, I think we're at that level where that's not really going to happen. Like, I can't see Adam Booth coming back and saying, you'll never guess what, uh, after 45 seconds of the first round, he moved to his left, then he moved to his right, and then he did an Ali shuffle. I think he's working on that for the fight, you know. If George drops Keza, though, inspiring, I'm sure you'll hear about that, wouldn't you? He dropped him last night. Did he really? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Um, do you know what? It, there's kind of like a professional code in sparring where you don't, you know, it does get out, but generally the real pros in the game don't really talk about it. If someone, And people can get knocked down at any time. People, you know, it happens all the time in sparring. But, oh, you'll never guess what? So-and-so got knocked down. He's like, ooh, you know, it just happens. If someone gets KO'd in sparring. That's, that's another another thing but no, I think everyone's too professional to start coming back telling stories it's it's purely done and it's not something I was involved with it's purely done to benefit George Groves as a fighter OK um, I know you've done the David A press conference over there but I wasn't here I was obviously in Vegas when I so uh, yeah, yeah. so uh, just a quick note on that uh yeah, I mean, you told me this, and it was like, I was genuinely gutted, you know, I was in Vegas, but I was gutted at the same time that I was going to be missing, like, your announcement of your link-up with Haymaker, so, you know, it must be great that you're responsible, or have part hand in bringing David Hay back to Sky Sports. Yeah, it's a, it's a major coup, you know, I've described it as, as a game-changer, if you like, getting Hay back on Sky, delivering for our broadcaster, and that was one of the few signings that we've made that you didn't know anything about because I tweeted about it and you came straight back and said who is it who is it tell me tell me and then uh, obviously you're away for the presser no but it was you know it's good and it's you know David's been around a long time he's worked on a lot of shows himself so you know they've got a good setup themselves so I think the deal was perfect for everyone in terms of what different people can bring to the table you know um, and we're really happy starting with the first one against Manuel, Tr Manuel Char 29th of June Reese Crawler Selby, looks like Frampton as well on the undercard for that. So, you know, great times for British boxing, great times for Sky Sports boxing. Three big world title fights coming back to back. And then Hay, and then the big Luke Campbell show outside. And then, of course, the news today, Billy Joe Saunders versus John Ryder. We won the purse bid over the moon with that. So, um, brilliant trade fight coming to Sky Sports. Can you tell us that what the winning bid was, please, Eddie? No. Come on. Give me a ballpark figure. Um, it was somewhere between one and a hundred thousand pounds. Okay, that probably... well, what, what I will tell you is a lot of money for for a domestic fight. So obviously, was it just you and Frank Warren that were bidding for it? I don't know who else bid. They did bid for it, um, but I don't know who else bid. He, you know, I'm not going to start talking about the bids and stuff like that. But he. You know, we we both bid a lot of money. We feel that we both feel that it's a great fight, great fight for the fans, great fight for British boxing. So I'm chuffed to get it on a matchroom show and on Sky Sports. When would you like to put that on? Have you already said? Not yet. No. I mean, I could put it on the whole show, but I want to bring it to London. So we're looking at adding another new show now on the 22nd of June or the 6th of July. You, you went like that. Is that because you're away? Yeah. No. Don't do the 22nd of June. So I've got a job on. A I'm, job I'm, yeah, I've got a job on. I'm doing some work. So the 6th of July. That sounds a bit early. I've got a job on. I have got some work on. Come on. You know I don't get paid for this shit I do. Yeah. It's not what I've heard. What about what you've heard? You know I don't make any money. Oh. What? about me? What are you on about? You're an entrepreneur, multi-million heir. Yeah. Not only am I the only promoter that is paying for your, all your expenses. I'm oh. the only promoter, actually. Okay. Because oh. Richard Poxon has oh. paid for us uh, hotels as well. Okay. I'm the only promoter that's also paying you a wage to be here. Why are you lying? Why is that a lie? You're paying me a wage. What a load of bollocks. What did you pay me? 500 quid a week. What? 500 quid a week. Why are you lying? Why is that? Why, why are you saying that? I don't see why you should you, be lying. You don't, you don't pay me fuck all. You pay for stuff like hotels and that. Listen, I, I love you for it. I genuinely do. Thank you. I, I, I understand what you're trying to do. Keep it on the down low from the tax man not a problem I shouldn't have mentioned it we definitely don't pay Guggen Cassius a wage at all no yeah, but that, that's wrong really because if you're paying me £500 and tomorrow I'm going to go and do a Frank Warren press conference how does that work then big boy well they don't pay you either why do we what do we get paid for we just we do it for the love of the sport so all these promoters not paying you I'm the only one that pays you a wage you, you don't told me oh they're all they're all slipping me this slipping me that so I'll come up to the you know come up trumps 
started slipping you the, the 500 a week. I'll tell you what then, you've only paid me 400 quid, so what about now on camera, you give me the other 100 that you owe me for this week? I gave you, I gave you a grand earlier for the last two events. This is bollocks. By the way, I film London listeners. This is going to box wreck and Eastside Box are going to have a field day with this. He doesn't pay me. He doesn't pay me. You knob, you don't pay me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, All right. but one day we're going to crack it. Um, Kelbrook, can you tell us any news about Kelbrook or not? His name is Ezekiel Brook. He lives in Sheffield. He's 26, about to turn 20. Don't talk bollocks, because I'll just tell people what you told me in the motor. Okay. Um, we're trying to make the Carson Jones fight for, for Hull, July the 13th. Um, I think it's the ideal fight for Kel to come back in in a 10-round fight. Um, a little bit of unfinished business there. I want to sharpen his tools up. He's been out since October. And I don't just want to give him a bowl over. I want to test him. And then, if you want me to be really honest, I'm trying to make the Julio Diaz fight for September at Sheffield Arena. See, this is what I don't understand. You're trying to make Julio Diaz and Kel Brook. You slated Amir Khan for fighting. Slate. You did. You slated him. I didn't slate him. For taking the Julio Diaz no, fight. No, 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 and now you're matching him up with Kel Brook. How does that make any sense? Like it. This is where idiots like you, right, and like Khan fans start saying, I slate Khan. I don't slate Khan. We picked Julio Diaz to fight Paul McCloskey, right? And we got slated for him as an opponent. Now, at the end of the day, he was a world champion at lightweight. He's come up to like welter and welter where he likes to box, by the way. Um, and he's fought Khan. He's given him all sorts of problems. If he would have fought McCloskey and won, then no problem with him fighting Khan. As it happens, he had Khan in all sorts of trouble, could have beaten Amir Khan. So I believe he's a credible opponent for Kel Brook. At the end of the day, I think Kel Brook will smash him everywhere. And that will send out a statement to people that realise who the daddy is in a UK division at welterweight. Right? Why don't you just make some moves and make the Khan and... No, make some moves and make the Khan and Brook fight happen. Because like, everyone wants it. Everyone talks about it. It's half getting boring now. It's like one of these fights that... And you, you have the power to actually make an offer to the Khan camp to actually make that fight happen? Well, the plan was to beat Devin Alexander and then go and try and make the Amir Khan fight on pay-per-view. But obviously, we've taken a couple of steps back and now we've got to cut, take a couple of steps forward. Let's beat Cam Carson Jones, let's beat Julio Diaz and then we'll start making some noise. At the moment, we haven't really got the right to start making noise again. Do you know what I mean? We've gone from up here to down here again. Now we've got to get back up here again. So I'm not going to start saying, yeah, Khan will fight you. At the moment, we've got to just keep a little bit quiet because we've had a rough couple of months and now we've got to make it right. And that starts with Carson Jones. Maybe it's Julio Diaz. Maybe it's, I don't know, the winner of Kano against Mosley. I don't know. But it's got to be a statement fight. Um, and, you know, like I said, we've got some building to do. But it's a challenge and you've got to be excited about that. Lee Purdy, obviously, has a massive opportunity next week in Atlantic City. Massively the underdog. No one's giving him a prayer list. Talk honestly, no one's giving him a prayer. You probably do give him a prayer. I'm hopeful, but he's definitely going there as an underdog. What chance do you give him going in against Devin Alexander? I give him a puncher's chance, and I give him a chance because he's strong as a ball, he punches hard, and he's game as they come. You know, he's probably going to get outboxed, but he's got to try and do something, and Tony and him have got to devise a plan where they can get to Alexander, rough him up and hit him hard. Um, he's a massive underdog. I mean, you know, listen, as a promoter, I guess I should be standing here going, hey, you know, this, that and that. But the truth is, he's got to beat someone of which, of the standard of someone he's never, ever beat before. So he's got to do something different. He's got to do the things that Alexander doesn't like, which is sometimes a little bit rough, punching hard. I mean, look at the Bailey fight. You know, he ran really for 12 rounds in that fight. Alexander's a brilliant fighter. Purdy's never fought anyone at that level. But this is why he's in the game. It's a massive opportunity. And don't be surprised to see Lee Hur Purdy hit him with an over -end right hand and knock him spark out. And it would be one of the sweetest things of all time. Quite a little feeling for Purdy. I don't know why. I think, like you said, with the things you just said there, the fact that he can bang, mm. and I've made sure that the whole of the American press when I was out at Mayweather Guerrero knows that Lee Purdy can bang. Um, listen, like I said, he'll be one of the 
greatest nights in British boxing if he was to do it. But sometimes life throws up some some funny treats, you know, and this whole process with with Kel Brook and you know the frustration that Alexander's had, that Kel's had. Now Kel uh, Devon's in a fight where he's probably not as motivated about. He's expected to win so comfortably. You know, sometimes that can that can cause some obstacles. You know, and um, like I say, don't don't be surprised. Massive underdog, but don't be surprised if Lee Purdy comes back with that world title. Just finally on that, would you give Lee Purdy more of a chance against Devon Alexander than you would have given Gavin against Adrian Broner? So someone asked me that the other day, and I said, you look at ways in which a fighter can beat someone, and with Gavin, I felt the way that he could potentially beat Broner was to outwork him. Unfortunately, I didn't realise just how good Broner was. He's phenomenal. right? And Gavin did brilliantly against him. He stopped Rose. He'll come back, he'll fight Crawler, he'll challenge for another world title. With this one, the way that Lee Purdy can beat him is to stop him or knock him out. And you can see that. It's going to be difficult, it's going to be hard to hit, but he can do it. Do you know what I mean? It's not like he can't punch. If Lee Purdy couldn't punch or had no strength at welterweight, he could not beat Devin Alexander. He cannot outbox him. He can't, cannot outpoint him. He cannot outscore him. The only thing he can do is hurt him and stop him. But he has got the ability, at least, to do that. If that makes sense. Makes perfect sense. I've just remembered something that I didn't tell you. Um, when I was in America, one of the boxing journos out there said to me, how's your boyfriend Hearn? So I turned around and said, what? He said, Eddie Hearn. He's your guy, right? I said, what do you mean, guy? Like, what? partner, life partner, lover, what do you mean? Well, he's your man, he's your guy, he's your boyfriend, right? I went, those are three completely different things. What do you mean, mate? And he went, ah, I'm just, I'm just joshing with your chief. That's what he said, joshing with your chief. How about that? If he said, I'm joshing with your chief, you want to be wondering how his fella is. <laughs> but, um, no, it's all love, Cooey. I mean, you know, I'm not that way inclined. If I was, I still wouldn't be interested, but, you know... Each to their own. Who was it? Do you know? It weren't Dan Raphael, was it? No. Nah, I do know the geezer's name, but I don't want to out him on the channel. Um, if you was the other way, what boxer would you fancy? Shut up, mate. <laughs> what sort of questions that? Who, you, who takes your eye? <laughs> Rock, rocking Robin Deacon. Okay. He's a salt. He's a salt. All right, we'll, we'll leave it there with Robin, Robin Deacon. Um, Darren Barker who I understand is actually coming out to AC with Lee Purdy, I believe. What's the situation with him? Anything news on the Gill fight? Trying to make the Daniel Gill fight. I was speaking to Gary Shaw late last night. Um, we're progressing nicely, still a long way to go. Chavez, I don't think we'll fight him. He wants to be too heavy and he wants it in Mexico. I think Murray will fight him or Vera. Um, but no, I'm hopeful of the Gill fight. I think it's a perfect fight for Darren. He's desperate for me to make it, so hopefully I can come up trumps. Um, who else is in your stable? Do you know how many fighters you've got, by the way? That's another question I wanted to ask you. Do you know actually how many fighters are signed for Metro? I haven't counted them, but when I talk about them, I always miss some out. So I'm going to try and go through them right now. Well, I, I know how many you've got, so I'll, I'll tick them off as you're going along. Go on. Carl Froch, Ricky Burns, David Hay, Gavin Reese, Carl Frampton, Tony Bellew, Lee Selby. John Ryder, Paul McCloskey, Lee Purdy, Rocky Fielding, Scott Cardle, Tom Stalker, Martin Ward, Callum Smith, Ryan Aston, Chris Evangelou, Wadi Camacho, oh, Darren Barker, sorry Darren, um, George Groves, sorry Georgie, Oh, if I'm, who have I missed out? I feel as though I've missed someone out. Do you know? And who was that? Someone will tweet me later saying you missed out someone. Well, well, you, you haven't missed out heavyweight, obviously. Yeah. You haven't missed out a light heavyweight, because you've only got one. Cruiserweight, Camacho. But the, you know, I always look at that thing, that poster we've got. Froch, Bell, Eric Oshang. Eric Oshang. Eric. I'm sorry. And Larry Ekindeo, sort of. We're doing some stuff with Spencer now, so... Oh, I feel bad for an eagle. I know. Mugged him right off. Um, there is someone else. Ryan Taylor. Ryan Taylor. 
Got a good little stable, haven't I? Not bad for about a year. Imagine what it would be like in three years. Well, who are you going to sign? There's no, there's no one else out there, is there? It's not about who we're going to sign in future. It's about the opportunities that we're giving these young fighters to progress and what they'll turn into. Do you know like Golden Boy are starting to do here? Why don't you, couldn't you do that over there? Take Matchroom over to America if you was to, obviously you've only, you're a novice, aren't you? You've only been going two years. Near novice, aren't you? Well, compared to all like the big, compared to the big promoters in the game like Frank Maloney and Frank Warren, no, compared to them, you've been doing it a, a small amount of time. They've been doing it 30 odd years, you've been doing it two years. Yeah, 30 odd years. So when you were a bit bigger, could you do that? 30. Uh, could I do that? Yeah, when I get bigger. When I, you know, I'm just a novice. Why are you talking like that? Because you've only been doing it two years. I know you are where you are. You're sitting pretty at the top of the sky tree. Woo, right? But you've only been doing it two years. So imagine where you're going to be in like ten years. That's what I'm trying to say to you. Yeah, well, you know, I might not be in boxing in 10 years, you don't know. That's the, the test of time, isn't it? And that's why you've got to take your hat off to Warrens and Maloney's because they've been in the game a long time. You're old man. Yeah, but, you know, you know, things change and times change. And I listen to my old man sometimes, I think, oh, mate, you're miles off the pace. And that's a problem with, you know, the older generation. Dad's on Twitter. What more do you want? Yeah, but look at my old man on Twitter. He should have like 200,000 followers. He's got 17,000 because people who remember my old man and like my old man aren't necessarily on Twitter. This is a new new generation. New age promoting. Dinosaurs go extinct. This show, Saturday, right? Obviously, if you're not here, you'll be watching it live on Sky Sports. Do you, uh, do you urge people... To perhaps turn Sky Sports on, sit on the sofa in front of their HD screens, uh, <laughs> maybe get some popcorn in, maybe get some ice cream in, maybe some drink in, sit down and relax and watch the fight. You're trying to get me to do one of my boxing impressions that I do. Right, momentary uh, break there while Eddie Hearn was the cameraman and took him... It wasn't top quality because within two seconds the camera panned that way while you was on Twitter. Don't you think it's muggy, right, when the camera pans on you and you're sitting ringside and you're tweeting from ringside and not watching the boxing? I'm always watching the boxing. I might just go like that. Oh, shit. But I'm always watching the boxing. But I like, you know, Twitter I'm nearly at 70,000 now, Cougs. That is mental. No other promoter was anywhere near that. Maybe on the top promoter. What do you think? I asked you that question earlier. What in the world? Mm, start with UK. Well, I'd say it was out of you and Warren, wouldn't it? As I said to you earlier on, listen, as I said to you earlier on, mm. right, you can't come into this sport as a novice, do your little work for two years, sign up whatever fighters and oh I'm the top promoter there's promoters in this country that have been doing this longer than you so well, that doesn't matter. I mean, you know what, to be honest I just want to set the record straight I really don't give a monkeys if I'm top promoter or not but one thing I will say about that is that is bollocks it doesn't matter how long you've been in the game if you're the top promoter at the moment you're the top promoter at the moment so if you've been boxing for 10 years and all of a sudden I come through the ranks and knock you spark out I'm the best not oh hang on a minute uh, while you're on the floor. Hang on, I've been doing this for 10 years. Uh, oh, that's... All right, then last year, who put on the biggest show in the country? What? Through the British Boxing Border Control? <laughs> no, who put the biggest show in the country on that was here? The most talked about and the biggest show that was on here? Carl Froch against Lucian Buter. Really? Not Hayden Chisora? Oh, yeah, no, that was a big fight. No, listen, again, I couldn't give a monkeys. All I'm saying is, is I disagree with your comment about just because you haven't been doing it very long, don't mean you can be you can't be number one. And I honestly couldn't care as far as number one, two, three, four, or five. But one would be nice, wouldn't it? No, I would say that you and Frank Warren are the top two promoters in the country. So who's first? Who's second? Maybe I fence it. I don't care, mate. I don't honestly. You do fucking care. No, Deep down, you know I don't care. Like, some people might think it's me, so I don't care. I don't care. 
got work to do, mate, not worry about myself. It's not the Eddie Hearn show. Really? Really? Oh, I know it's good now. I know, it's, I know it. I'll listen. I'll do that. All jokes aside, I'll do that. I might come across as a little bit of a flash area at times, but I really ain't. I don't give a monkeys. I want to see... I want to see my fighters do well. My mates, really. I mean. You love playing that mate card, didn't you? Yeah. I mean, yes. I mean, they're my fighters, but, you know, also they're also my friends. No. They are my fighters, but they're also my friends. They are, they. I haven't really got any other mates, to be honest with you. Would you class me, because I'm not a work colleague, because I don't work for you. I'm not an associate. I could, be an, I could fall into the associate bracket, but where would you class me because I don't really think you booked me as much as when we first met even though you invited me around your house to film you are you, are you trying to say are you my friend is that what you're asking me in a word yes I, don't, I suppose you are but like, I do class that friend thing as like you know when someone phones you and you go and you see who it is it's like I think that response is quite key as to what you really think of that person and I have to say most of the time it goes like this. Oh, fuck off, Coogan, what do you want? Do you know what I mean? So, whilst I do like you, you can be a pain in the arse at times. Why, why am I a pain in the arse? I don't do anything wrong. I don't no, bug you, I don't ask you for information. It's like this. When, like, I've got a million things going on and calls coming in left, right and centre, and then it's Coogan, and I go, hello. All right, mate. Uh, what time's... The, f the flight tomorrow. It's like cool. I'm in the middle of something at the moment, mate. All right. Why you got the hump? Because you're a little bit of a, you know, an old woman as well. You start thinking that people got the hump with you, and then someone will tweet you something, and you'll go to me. Oh, did you see what they tweeted me? Oh, it's really hurt my feelings. You do get like that, and then you start. You n notice when you reply to people's tweets, you start getting all like, oh, what did you say that for? No, that's not true actually. Fucking leave them. Let people. Pe you do understand that on Twitter, people want. A response. You know what I mean? You respond to people. I know you do. You do respond to people. When someone writes to you something that you think is a load of bollocks or whatever, you write back to them. That's the only people you respond to, actually. You don't respond to anyone sort of going to you, oh, well, hi, Eddie, I've just bought 19 tickets for your show in Scotland. Oh, thanks, mate. No, you don't do that. Do but when someone calls you an absolute cunt, then you respond to them. Actually, you're wrong. I always retweet those people that buy tickets. Actually, it's probably why I lose some followers sometimes. But if someone just gives me outright abuse, I won't reply. If someone's got an opinion about something, boxing related or sport related, that I do have a problem with, I will reply. But if someone just says, Eddie, you're an absolute fat tit, I'll just laugh and go, like today someone put, you are a numpty or a bell end or something. And I looked at the bloke's photo and I looked at him and I thought, are you for real, mate? And I was going to reply, me versus you in life, hashtag Eddie wins again. Do you know what I mean? But then I thought, that's a bit, you know, so I'll just leave it. Can we just also just clarify, I didn't actually ring you to ask you what time the plane was. Did you not ring me and yeah, tell me? No, generally. Oh, you're going to, oh, don't announce that. Oh, do it on me. Oh, oh. What's that? I don't do that. I ring you up if I've got something to ask you specifically. But really, it's a point, like, pointless ringing you up. I might as well ring up fucking Anthony, Matt Rich, Karen in the office. Well, the well, next time, or maybe I will. Maybe I will. Maybe I won't ring you no more, Eddie. Let's I'll see how you like it. I'll be devo. Do you know what? I found out the other day, it's not personal to me because I've heard other people say that Hearn doesn't answer the fucking phone. Yes, I have. Yeah, I have. So... Depends on who it is, doesn't it? And I've seen people in boxing phone you today, and I've seen you do what you've just said. I've seen you just look at it and go, hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but the thing is, it's like you got I got people phoning me up non -stop. Oh, can we do this? Can we do this? Can I get an action? I go, oh. and it's like when you're in the middle of something, and you go, oh, fuck it now. Do you know what I mean? And I try and deal with everyone, but sometimes it's not possible. We got to go and we catch this plane. Cook and Cassius. Yeah. Do a little plug for Sky Sports to make sure you've still got the deal at the end of it. Okay. This is Eddie Hearn with iFilm London. This Saturday, live from the Emirates Arena. Don't miss, starting off 8pm, Stephen Simmons against Michael Sweeney for the Celtic Cruiserweight title. John Simpson against Choi in one of the most hotly anticipated trade fights of the year. And Ricky Burns, one of Britain's three world champions and the one world champion from Scotland fighting number one contender Jose Gonzalez here. 
Starting off a big three weeks from Matchroom. Lee Purdy against Devon Alexander, live from Atlantic City. Also, Matisse uh, against Peterson on the bill. And a week after that, Froch v Kessler. Biggest fight of the decade. Moving to June, David Hay. And somehow we've got a feeling fitting Ryder against Saunders as well. Luke Campbell making his debut. Kel Brook back in action. Big open air show in July. British boxing is hot to trot. And partly, or one of the big reasons, I have to say, is me. Thank you. Coogan Cassius, Fry from London. Thank you very much.